Hi, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I am streaming to you from beautiful Central Europe here, the capital city of Hungary, Budapest. And I see we have students joining us from other corners of the world. Hi, Gun Kai Ren from Beijing, China. Hi, Jose Ramon from Spain. Hi, Hung from Taiwan, I believe, Hung, if I remember correctly. Welcome, students. As usual, uh, the materials for this class come from our websites, the strategies. You can find lots of IELTS help there, aehelp.com for academic version of the test. Of course, we have two websites. It makes sense. It's different groups of people. For general uh, module, check out G-I-E-L-T-S help.com. That's general IELTS help.com. And on both of those websites, you can use the code LIVE20 to get a 20% discount to our premium full course. The websites look like this. This is aehelp.com. Click that red button to join. Then you can enter the coupon LIVE20 by clicking that giant use coupon code button that you see in the bright screen behind me. This is the general uh, version of the website with the green background. Same idea. Click that big red button, enter the code LIVE20, and join our premium course. All right. So uh, today, students, we are doing speaking part one um, for the IELTS exam. Uh, speaking is the same for general and for academic. Uh, a lot of uh, students, I think, get confused. They think that they need to speak differently if they're taking the academic exam. Uh, no. In both cases, whether you're taking the general exam or the academic version of the exam, you need to communicate clearly coherently, completely, fluently, naturally, with a good range of grammar and vocabulary. That's it in a nutshell, okay? All right, um, so we'll get right into it. Lots of students have joined in, which is great. This is a speaking session, so make sure to repeat, uh, repeat, questions and repeat answers. Students, remember, practice questions as well as answers in the speaking section. So it's great to do it in partners. I know often students are searching for partners even in our chat in these live classes. Hi, Ferdovs. Hi, Roshni. Hi, Zainab. I see lots of members joining in. Wanted to give a shout out to the members. If you have questions, students, about the IELTS exam, you can always contact me through my email, adrian at aehelp.com, or about our products. Uh, this is our schedule here. I posted this on our community board in the YouTube channel. And let's get into some part one speaking questions. So the speaking section of the IELTS exam, it has three parts. Each part is more and more difficult. They're a little bit different, okay? Part one is usually about you. Okay, and it's easier topics like hobbies, sports, movies, so easier topics to talk about. At the same time, you do need to show your skills right from the very beginning. So you walk into the exam uh, room with for this interview, same for the computer-based exam, same for the paper-based exam, speaking is face-to-face, -face, okay? All right, so you walk in and you are face-to-face uh, -face with the examiner. They welcome you in. Uh, they might look very serious. They might look very happy. Uh, they might look concerned. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about what they look like, okay? Worry about yourself and doing a good job, all right? Doing a good job. Duza, Magar, good luck on your uh, writing, listening, reading part of the exam tomorrow. I hope it goes well, Duza. All right, uh, so they will try to make you feel comfortable, okay? 
Again, imagine that the examiner is your grandfather or your grandmother. Speak respectfully, completely. Don't assume they know what you know. They don't know what you know. Okay? You need to tell them what you know. So here we go with the first question, part one. Uh, of course, when you walk in, they'll start with, may I see your identification, please? So how should you respond? May I see your, you've just come into my room. I'm your examiner. Uh, thank you uh, for attending the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. May I see your identification, please? They'll ask for your passport or your national ID. You cannot do the test without it, so make sure to remember to bring it. Ferdov says, yes, sure, have a look. Uh, Amarjeet says, why not? Here it is. Please check it out. Amarjeet, it would be please check it out. Okay. Uh, please check. It's not bad. It's just a little bit less natural. Okay. Uh, Ponikani Udayas Udayasri says, yes, sure. Please take it. Uh, please take it as unnatural, Ponikani. Ponikani. You wouldn't because that sounds like you're giving your passport to that person. And of course, you never give your passport. Uh, indefinitely to another person. So um, please take it and have a look. But even then, I, I wouldn't use please take it. Just please have a look or yes, sure, here you are. Okay. All right. Uh, Love Panu says, yes, sure, please have a look. And those are all good responses. Try different ways to say this so that you sound natural. Um, a nice respectful way, again, is just to say yes, certainly. Here it is. Please take a look. Okay. So that's a very respectable way to say it and natural as well, an intelligent way to say it. So repeat after me. Yes, certainly. Here it is. Please take a look. Okay. That's not going overboard. Again, it's uh, polite. It's intelligent. It's a good way to do it. All right, and then the next question is always, what is your full name? The reason is they are matching your name with what they see in your identification. So what is your full name? Okay, Lovepreet Singh says, my full name is Lovepreet Singh Bular. Please just call me by my full name, which is Lovepreet. Lovepreet, I think you want to say, please call me by my first name, which is Lovepreet. I think that's what she wanted to say. <laughs> Omar, you're watching this live stream from your speaking exam. Fantastic. Uh, good luck in 10 minutes. Just remember, Omar, relax. Uh, keep thinking, speaking in English and speak in full sentences. Omar, think, answer, explain, example. Answer, explain, example, and stop, okay? Omar, just keep thinking about that and you'll do just fine. I'm with you in spirit, okay? All right. Uh, Hung says, my full name is Tsai Sheng Hung. Please just call me Hung. Okay, that makes sense. That's great, Hung. Okay, it's good. It's clear. It's simple. Uh, Ferdov says, my name is Nabiev Ferdovs. Uh, you may call me as my first name, Ferdovs. Okay, uh, do tell me what your first name is because, you know, in some countries, students, uh, family names are said first, and in other countries, given names are said first. So always clarify for the examiner what your first name actually is, okay? Zainab says my full name is Zainab Naif, um, so just call me by my given name, which is Zainab, okay? So again, Zainab, same thing, make it clear what your given name is. Don't assume that your examiner can guess that. You might get a question like, and which one is your given name? So just include that, all right? Sure, so let's take one of those. Um, my family name is Mackenzie, and my uh, first name, first name is Alexander. Please call me Alex. Okay, so uh, that's another way to do it. Again, just repeat after me, students. So nice and loud, okay? Be confident, be brave. Omar, if you're hearing this, be brave, be loud. Don't be quiet on your exam. 
and just do your best. Okay, so my family name is Mackenzie and my first name is Alexander. Please call me Alex. All right, that'll work. And then uh, the examiner will um, ask you one or two more questions just to get to know you better. They might even say, I'll ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and then start part one, some questions on a general topic. Um, so those uh, icebreaker questions, they're called icebreaker questions. They're designed to make you feel more comfortable. They're supposed to be easy and simple to answer. And definitely the examiner is using these icebreaker questions to get an idea of your level so that they can kind of start thinking of how to approach the speaking, okay? Uh, so you do have to show that you are confident and fluent right from the very beginning. A very common question is, do you work or study? Okay, do you work or study? So give me some nice full sentence answers for this one, okay? Remember, in the speaking, always give an answer. Explain in an example as much as you can. Okay, answer, explain, example. That's what you have to be studying at home all the time. All right. So, Cigar Jose says, currently I'm working as an audiologist at Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. I have been working there for three years. That's good. Okay, that works. Uh, Harminder Dinjda says, I'm a student. Uh, Harminder, it's I'm a bachelor's student of commerce uh, in Pujami University at Paitala. And in the future, I hope to be an entrepreneur. Okay. All right. That works. Um, again, students, I'm correcting uh, these replies in real time. So you can repeat them. I am giving the correct response grammatically, naturally, as much as possible, of course. Um, Roshni K says, I not only work in a pharmacy as a pharmacist, but I also prepare for the IELTS exam to pursue higher studies and get a better paying job in the future. Uh, get a high paying job in the future, Roshni, is okay as well. I would make it relative to my uh, work as a pharmacist, so I would say to get a better paying job in the future. Okay, that's what I would say. All right. Um, Again, I have my own style of diction. It's natural. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Canadian, West Coast. So that's where my diction comes from. And I graduated from the University of Victoria in psychology. So that's a little bit about my background and my style of English. All right. Uh, Kamana says, currently I'm working as an RN in a United Mission Hospital in the pediatric department for the past four years, since four years ago. Students, be really careful with that for the past four years or since four years ago, all right? Don't make the confusion with the since a certain time or for a certain time. For a certain time is the time period. Since a certain time is the time in the past until now. So it's a little bit different when uh, you confuse that um, then that's a problem. Ferry Budiman, yes, UVic. UVic is the University of Victoria, British Columbia. It's a nice, uh, fairly large university with about 20,000 students. HM says, I work as a software engineer in a Japanese-based IT firm uh, for the past year, would be more natural, HM, for the past year. Okay, um, so... Yeah, let's throw in a correlative conjunction, which is the not only, but also. Uh, not only do I work as an electrical engineer for uh, Whirlpool, let's say, but I'm also uh, studying 
to get a band 7.5 on the IELTS exam so that I can pursue higher education at MIT in the US. All right. So that's a nice correlative uh, conjunction there. Uh, again, everybody repeat after me, nice and loud. So do you work or study? Not only do I work as an electrical engineer for Whirlpool, but I'm also studying to get a band 7.5 on the IELTS exam so that I can pursue higher education at MIT in the U.S. All right, um, students, if you don't catch what I say, my speed is natural when I uh, read or say these, uh, then just come back later in this lesson and repeat again. You can always um, write down in a document or on a piece of paper the timestamp for these uh, statements. So right now we're at 16 minutes. So you can write down 16 minutes on a piece of paper to remind yourself that that's where this question uh, is uh, explained. And then you can go back and practice saying it a few times. Okay, so don't panic if you miss it. Okay. All right. Um, so one more of these icebreaker questions. Again, very common to uh, hear this one. What do you do at weekends? British English at weekends in Canada or US. We say, what do you do on weekends? But British English, it's at weekends. Up to you which one you choose. It's totally fine. Just be correct. Okay, so what do you do at weekends? Uh, just breathe. Uh, if you're lacking in speaking, go on our website, aehelp.com. Check it out. We have You can book practice speaking sessions with us. Okay. Uh, Ferdov says, at weekends, I like to go for walks in the Central Park, which is located near my house with my sons, uh, take in the fresh air and unwind from the grind of everyday life. Ferdov, that's very nice. I know you've practiced expressing that a few times. It's nice, natural. Uh, again, Ferdov, focus on saying different concepts in different ways, just so it really comes across naturally in the real situation. Uh, Lanthew says, well, I usually spend the morning, uh, well, <laughs> Lanthew, let's start one more time. Well, I usually spend Sunday morning sleeping in because I feel exhausted after a long working week. Then I have brunch with my friends to catch up on what they have been doing. Okay, uh, Har Kiran Kaur says, on weekends, I just want to take it easy and pursue my hobbies such as reading and gardening. Uh, Harkaran, that's a good start. I would add a little bit more to push your band score a bit higher. So Harkaran Kaur, I would say on weekends, I just want to take it easy and pursue my hobbies such as reading and gardening. Uh, just last Saturday, I planted a beautiful cactus into my garden. Okay, something like that, Harkaran. Just give that little example in there to tweak it that much more. It gives that visual uh, idea to complete the communication. Okay. Gurkarat S says, I usually play badminton at weekends because I love this game. Um, and I play it with my friends at a village sports center uh, that has good facilities. So it's very enjoyable. Okay. Gurkarat, the second half, there was a little bit awkward. You need to rethink that. All right. Arminder Dinjda says, well, I love to watch new movies and enjoy shopping uh, for different kinds of items. And also I hang out with my friends. Uh, that's not bad, Harminder, but instead of jumping around to a lot of different activities, focus on one or two, go into detail and give some examples. Okay, so uh, since my work is very tiring. I like to take it easy on the weekends and kick back at home with my hobbies like uh, reading and reading novels and 
uh, watching movies. Just yesterday, I saw the new Spider-Man film. It was entertaining and relaxing. Now, you have to say this kind of a response with some fluency. Otherwise, the examiner might interrupt you if you say it in a very broken way. So, uh, again, when you express your ideas in full sentences with answers, explanations, examples, uh, then you need to be fluent. Otherwise, you might find the examiner interrupting you. So be very careful about that, okay? So here, practice this with me, okay? So repeat with me. What do you do at weekends? Since my work is very tiring, I like to take it easy on the weekends and kick back at home with my hobbies, like reading novels and watching movies. Just yesterday, I saw the new Spider-Man film. It was entertaining and relaxing. So to get it out, you really need that fluency. Sagun, I missed your uh, answer, but don't worry. Keep uh, writing and sp saying your answers, students. I will catch different students at different times. Uh, there are 280 of us in this session, so it's tough to catch everyone, but I'll do my best to focus in on different names, okay? Um, kick back, Gunkai Ren, means to relax. Yeah, it's an expression that means relax. Students, when you see new expressions uh, that I'm teaching you, like kick back at home with my hobbies, or you can say kick back at home with friends, um, write those down so you can learn them, practice saying them, okay? All right. So again, notice that here, since my work is very tiring, I have reason, okay? So that's my explain. Now that's a complex sentence. Since here is showing cause and effect. So since A, B happens. So since my work is tiring, I like to take it easy on the weekends uh, and kick back at home with my hobbies. That's my answer. Okay. Uh, like reading novels and watching movies, that's my detail. Okay. And then here, just yesterday, so I don't say, for example, uh, these days the examiners don't like to hear, for example, or for instance, because they feel the student is just going to blah, 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 and go off topic. And they don't have time for that, so they interrupt students when they hear, for example, or for instance. So we stop teaching students to say that. Instead, you want to quickly force your example with expressions like just yesterday. Just yesterday, I saw the new Spider-Man film. It was entertaining and relaxing. Even if the examiner cuts you off here, you already have your example. So again, why is this a band nine? Because number one, I give my answer. Number two, I explain. Number three, I give an example. At the same time, I'm using a complex sentence, okay? So I have complexity. I'm using natural language. Only use expressions that you're familiar with, okay? So I'm using natural language. I'm using complex language. I'm giving an answer. I'm explaining. I have detail with a good example. That's why it's a band eight, band nine, okay? That's high-level communication. That's what you need to focus on. I hope that's clear. Okay. All right. Uh, so let's keep going here. Now we're going into the part one questions. And today's part one question is a very popular topic. It's frequently seen. They always have different topics, but this one is tends to be quite common. Uh, on the IELTS exam. So uh, this one is, let's talk about your hometown, okay? Let's talk about your hometown. Now, before we get going here, um, just a very quick piece of advice, okay? Your hometown is maybe where you live or where you grew up. Those could be different places. 
Uh, which one should you talk about? The place where you grew up or the place where you live now, if that's different? If it's the same, no question. If it's different, then this is a question that many students who live in different places ask. Should I talk about my hometown as the place I grew up or the place I live now? Of course, given that it's different. Okay, what do you think? Should you talk about the place where you grew up or should you talk about the place where you live now? Okay, Surya says the place where we grew up. Sh Sharn Both says it's the place where I live now. Charlie Sen agrees that it's where you're living now. Mohammed says, eh, it's the place where you're born. Okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, Alvina, very clever. Alvina says, that depends on you, okay? Uh, clever answer, Alvina. Um, it's a trick question, students. Okay, talk about the easiest one for you, all right? It's a trick question. For the examiner, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if your hometown is... Uh, where you grew up or where you live now. Um, you can say, I spent most of my time in this city. It's my hometown. It's what you call home. Okay, your hometown is what you call home. Um, so it can be where you live now or it can be where you grew up. It's up to you. Uh, the trick or the key is talk about the easiest one. If you live in a big city right now where there are lots of different activities, uh, a lot of culture, a lot of restaurants, it might be much easier to talk about that than talking about maybe a small village where you grew up and there's not too much action, okay? So fake facts are absolutely okay, Gunkai Ren, absolutely. And you can specify that while speaking, Aman, absolutely, right? So think about, always think about what is the easiest for me to talk about, all right? Um, so here we go. Where is your hometown? Okay, you should be able to answer that question in English if you are at least a band 3.54. All right, so hopefully more, but you need to be able to answer that question. So give me a nice answer for this. Where is your hometown? Okay. Obviously, this is asking about location. Okay. Lovepreet Singh says, my hometown is in the northern part of Punjab, India, um, which uh, people can find easily on Google Maps. Um, okay, Lovepreet, uh, it's an interesting answer. Um, name your hometown, Lovepreet. What is the name of your hometown? I can't find it on Google Maps if I don't know the name of it. Okay, you just said it's in the northern part of Punjab. There's probably multiple places there. So remember... Rule number one, your examiner doesn't know what you know, okay? Um, Isaf Timber says, my hometown is Muzaffarabad. It's located in the northern area of Pakistan. It is a beautiful city with lots of historical buildings. Uh, I can't read the Cyrillic above Insaf, but she, he says, my hometown is located in the south of Russia. Where? Between... The Caspian and the Ural, or what's the name of it? So try to be more specific. Students, think of north, west, east, south, um, relative location to other cities or towns, okay? Uh, Niamatula Shaharani, my hometown. Oh, let me try to get you back there. It's swimming away. Uh, all right says, my hometown is located in the center of Af Afghanistan, and it is very famous for its almonds. It's okay to include a little detail like what it's famous for, Niamatullah, um, but you still, more importantly, have to give me the name of your hometown, okay? Um, and maybe even give me the continent, especially if you're... Um, 
uh, taking IELTS in another part of the world. Like if you're taking the exam in London, you might say my hometown is located in the center, which is called, is located in the center of Afghanistan, uh, which is, of course, in South Central uh, Asia. Okay, so include those details. All right. Okay, let's take one more. Um, Jin Yun Yu says, My hometown is Kuai Sung City, which is located in the south of Taiwan, and it is one of the biggest in this area as well. Okay, good. Yeah, so I'll give you my answer. Um, my hometown of Victoria. is situated on the most southern tip of Vancouver Island, which is the most western part of Canada. And, of course, it is the capital city of the province of British Columbia. Okay. Yeah, and notice how currently I'm uh, living in Budapest, and I love Budapest. It's a beautiful city. I consider it my home away from home, but my hometown, I would definitely... Uh, say is Victoria. It's where I've spent most of my life. So again, repeat after me. Where is your hometown? My hometown of Victoria is situated on the uh, most southern tip of Vancouver Island, which is the most western part of Canada. And of course, it is the capital city of the province of British Columbia. All right. Next question. What is the weather like in your hometown? Give me a nice answer for that one. What is the weather like in your hometown? Again, students, we want to keep the ball rolling, but I will read different people's comments at different times. So just keep going. Be brave. Keep going. Okay. Keep pushing your ideas using your English. Typing and speaking. Don't forget to speak, students. So sometimes take a break from typing and speak. Okay. All right. Aman Dillon says, the weather is very unpredictable in my hometown. Students, be specific. Again, the more specific you are with names, the better. So instead of saying hometown, if you told me your hometown is Victoria, then say the weather is is very unpredictable in Victoria. Why, Amandilan? Because, and then give me some information. Because it is in a valley and the winds move in very strange directions throughout the year. Okay, so give me some information. Uh, Neo Billim says, my hometown geographically is located in a warm climate zone. However, it is cold in the winter and hot in the summer. Okay, that's a little bit of confusing information. So uh, try to tell me a little bit more. Again, students, sorry that I can't read uh, Cyrillic, but uh, that's another one of our maybe Russian students. Says, uh, since I live in the southern part of Russia, the weather is pretty warm all year round, namely 15 to 17 degrees. Winters are mild, there's not much snow, and summers are quite hot. That's really good. I like the quantitative language, Seven, 15 to 17 degrees. That's great. Quantitative language is really good. Now, when you think of weather, you think hot, cold, temperature, degrees, and you should also think wet and dry, right? So Sandeep Kumar says the weather in Sri Gangangar uh, is all four seasons. It's a very beautiful summer. And in the winter, there are uh, chilly monsoons. Okay. Let's see some more. 
Keenan Husenzada says, my hometown is, is Baku, which is the capital of the Republic of Azerbaijan and located in the Caucasus, west coast of the Caspian Sea. The weather in my country is hot right now, but mostly windy throughout the year and chilly in the winter down to minus 10 degrees Celsius. Okay, Kanan, that's good. All right. Um, just giving a little bit more there. Let's see. Amarjeet S. says, In my hometown, the weather is extremely hot during the summer and winter. It reaches around 48 degrees in the summer and 4 degrees in the winter. Uh, Amarjeet, try to organize that a little bit better. Okay. Um, let's see. Charlie Sen says, As I have already said that I am from the east part of India, so the, mo the weather is mostly warm. Especially, especially in the summer, the temperature is nearly 45 degrees centigrade. Winter is a more comfortable temperature at about 10 degrees. Okay, good. All right, so the weather in Victoria is temperate since it is located uh in the banana belt of Canada and gets a warm Hawaiian current for most of the year uh so temperatures hover uh, between 15 and 26 degrees and it rains about 170 days of the year. All right. So again, quantitative language uh, and um, using a good range of vocabulary is important to get those higher band scores. Uh, Victoria, it's a very southern part of Canada. So uh, believe it or not, Victoria, Vancouver, in the city, there are years when we do not see snow. Uh, most people would not guess that for Canada uh, because Victoria and Vancouver are in the banana belt of Canada, as we call it. So here's the answer. What is the weather like in your hometown? The weather, let me just correct that very quickly okay one more time the weather in victoria is temperate since it is located in the banana belt of canada and gets a warm hawaiian current for most of the year so temperatures hover between 15 and 25 degrees and it rains about 170 days of the year hence the rainforest that surrounds the beautiful city okay all right, so again, quantitative language, remember it. Quantitative language gets you points, okay? So notice this 15 to 25 degrees, that's quantitative, okay? It means numbers. Uh, that uh, explains this idea here, which is a temperate climate. Uh, temperate climate students, maybe it's new vocabulary for you. Temperate means that it doesn't get very hot, it doesn't get very cold. So the temperature is kind of stable for uh, most of the year. Okay, so temperate explained by numbers. And then here I threw in a little bit more for the rain. It's a very rainy city, 170 days of the year it gets rain. Okay, all right. Next question. When is a good time to visit there? Why? When is a good time to visit there and why? Okay. So notice that the examiner is trying to ask different types of questions. So what, where, here it's when. Okay. So when is a good time to visit there? 
Uh, Toolsy, you can say moderate instead of temperate, but temperate is more accurate. It's better vocabulary than moderate. It's more accurate. Okay? But you can say moderate. Temperate is better. Temperate is a type of climate. Okay? So, uh, the Umi Japan says, I think spring is the best season to visit Japan, so you can enjoy the cherry blossoms called sakura. Yes, the famous cherry blossoms, also quite popular in Victoria, Umi, on the other side of the Pacific. Aman Dillon says, the best time to visit Kapurthala is the winter because the weather is pleasant and you can enjoy yourself more. It's not too hot, easier to move around. For Dov says, St. Petersburg is one of the most popular places among tourists, and the best time to uh, visit is from May until October. Okay, Alvina says, the most convenient time to have a trip to my town is the summer, as the weather is warm and comfortable, so you can enjoy taking uh, in the sun, uh, bathing in the ocean, and eating fresh ripe berries gathered from the farms and gardens, Alvina. Okay. All right. Please like my channel says you can come at any time to my hometown because mostly if you visit in the winter season, you can enjoy different activities such as skiing, which is not available in the summer when you can do surfing, okay? So please like my channel. Give me a little bit more explanation. Give, explain to me what I can enjoy in different seasons, okay? All right. Hanifa Fauzia. Actually, uh, the spring season is the best time to visit Garut City. At that time, you can go hiking and see the beautiful scenery okay hanifa good couple of small mistakes notice my corrections all right so when is a good time to visit there the best time to travel to victoria is in july and august not only because there is less rain at that time, but also you can witness some incredible events like the migration of killer whales. All right. So there's my answer. Um, the best time to travel to Victoria. Again, repeat after me. And students, don't forget what I said. Practice repeating questions as well. When is a good time to visit there? Why? The best time to travel to Victoria is in July and August, not only because there's less rain at that time, but also you can witness some incredible events like the migration of killer whales. All right, those are those black and white whales, uh, beautiful creatures that swim in families, and we get quite the group of them around Vancouver Island. Um, so, again... Specific, July and August, quantitative, using a correlative conjunction, not only, but also, okay? Using complex language, because, using specific vocabulary, killer whales, seems simple, but it's not, okay? If it seems simple, it's because it's quality, and you will get high band scores. It's not dangerous to uh, visit the killer whales, Gorkarat. You're in the safety of a boat. And uh, killer whales don't attack humans. Um, they like humans. Uh, so if we don't attack them, they don't attack us. They're not like sharks. Okay, um, so again, pay attention to using different kinds of joining words. 
uh, subordinating, coordinating, correlative conjunctions. Use specific vocabulary. All right. Here we go. Next question, students. Keep going. Don't give up. If I don't catch your comment, I might catch it next time. Okay. Amarjeet, I'll catch it next time. So just keep going. What are the people like in your hometown? Go for it, Amarjeet. Tell me that one. I promise I'll catch it this time. Okay. So what are the people like in your hometown? Uh, Tyinder Singh is asking a good question. So Tyinder says, sir, can we use our, we, you, us in speaking? Um, Tyinder, especially in part one, the questions are uh, most often about you. So definitely you need to use us, we, you. It's first, second person for part one in speaking, okay? Uh, for uh, the writing, Tyinder, it depends. You can use you, us, we are in task one, of the general IELTS for the uh, letter writing, okay? So send me an email tender if it's not clear. All right. Uh, Hnu Sandu uh, says, in my hometown, most individuals like to play Kabaddi, a famous game in my hometown, and old men mostly play cards in the center of the village. Uh, Sandu, I don't think that really explains what the people are like in your village. It sounds like they are uh, down to earth. They uh, are very relaxed. Um, they like to play games. Um, but I'm just guessing from what you're saying. Okay. You need to be more specific. Okay. Satisfying uh, Times says, among all the cities in my country... Sokaras is famous uh, for the kindness of people. They don't just make you comfortable, but they also are very helpful and welcoming to all religions. Okay, satisfying times. Very good. So that's a good explanation. I had a couple of corrections there. Make sure you take note of that. Okay. Uh, Shamster Depp says, People in my hometown are very friendly and accommodating. So you'll have no problem visiting this ethnically diverse uh, group of people. Okay. Good. Um, Kim Salma says, most of us are amiable, but some may seem intimidating when you meet them for the first time, especially those from the older generation. Nevertheless, people in my hometown are very hardworking. Uh, Kim Salma, very good. Okay, always name your hometown, uh, especially for me because I'm not catching all of yours from the beginning, right? Reba, good to see you comment. Reba says, in my hometown, people are very quiet. Not only are they friendly, but helpful in nature as well. Most people always find at least a bit of time to chat. Very good. Okay, good job. All right, Amarjeet Singh says, uh, visitors not only relish in a variety of foods, but also participate in festivals. Uh, Amarjeet, that would be off topic, so your band score would be a little bit low on that one. Okay. So what are the people like in my hometown? Um, most... People in Victoria are quite uh, friendly and helpful. However, there are some people who can be snobbish since they are wealthy and preoccupied. Okay, so some vocabulary here for you. Repeat after me. What are the people like in your hometown? Most people in Victoria are quite friendly and helpful. However, there are some people who can be snobbish since they are wealthy and preoccupied. Yeah, Victoria is one of those wealthier parts of the world. 
snobbish means that they kind of hold their noses high in the air as they walk around um, and they think that they are the center of the universe. Uh, that's snobbish, snobbish. All right. Here we go. Next question. Is there any special place to visit in your city or town? Think of an easy answer. Okay. Is there any special place to visit in your city or hometown? Again, when you see new vocabulary students like snobbish, make sure to write it down. Okay. Satisfying Times says there are a plethora of mind-blowing places in my city to visit. The one I would strongly recommend is Kamisa as the best because you will have a chance to see an old Romanian building architecture that will leave you breathless. Uh, yeah, satisfying times. Careful not to overdo the uh, slang or the expressions. Otherwise, it can become kind of awkward. Okay, but not bad. Satisfying times. Not bad. All right. All right. Umi Japan says special places to visit in Tokyo include Disneyland, of course. Um, and what else, Umi Japan? Give me a little bit more. Okay. Shushgurba, uh, Shush Garbuja says, yes, there are many special places to visit in my hometown. Uh, I would definitely recommend uh, Love Hill as a beautiful, uh, picturesque mountain, which is very romantic, especially for couples. Okay. So, uh, indeed, Victoria is regarded as the garden city and is home to Butchart Gardens that is acclaimed as the sixth most beautiful garden in the world so visitors should definitely go there before leaving the city all right uh, here we go indeed victoria is regarded as the garden city and is home to Butchart Gardens that is acclaimed as the sixth most beautiful garden in the world. So visitors should definitely go there before leaving the city. All right. That's my answer. Let's see a couple more from students. Pachu says, yes, there are historical places situated in Janakpur, which is famous for its tourist attractions. It was the place where the god Ram and goddess Sita were married together. Pachu, very interesting. Thanks for sharing that. And that was a good recommendation. Okay. Uh, Khalifa KIJ is asking a good question. Uh, Khalifa says, what if we don't know or we don't have such a place? Um, Khalifa, make it up. Okay. I'm guessing that your city has at least one temple or river or forest or garden. Uh, or a library, a museum that people can visit. It's very difficult to believe that uh, even a small town wouldn't have uh, a tree or some interesting lake with fish that uh, you would recommend for tourists to check out. So try to be creative, okay? Uh, don't get yourself into awkward uh, situations. All right, students, uh, two more questions. How has your town or city changed in the past 20 years? This is present perfect. How has? So your answer has to be present perfect. And one final question in conditional. If you can change one part of your hometown, what would it be and why? This is a conditional. So your answer should be conditional. I will leave these two questions for you to do on your own for homework. 
record your answers on your phone in MP3, send them to my email, and I will give you a score estimate. I will tell you roughly what you can expect. Don't type your answers, record and send it as an MP3 so I can hear your fluency, your accent, your actual speaking. Send them to Adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. Again, that's from our websites, uh, aehelp.com for academic, I-E-L-T-S, G-I-E-L-T-S, help.com for general. On both of those websites, students, you can use the code right now, LIVE20, L-I-V-E-20, to get a 20% discount. We already give the best prices for the best IELTS products available online. And now we're giving you a 20% coupon code to make your life that much simpler. Uh, this is the general version. It's at G-I-E-L-T-S help.com. Click that red button. Then you'll see a blue button that says apply coupon code. You can hit that and type it in there. Uh, this is the coupon code there. This is our academic website here with the blue background. You can use it on your phone, tablet, PC. Um, we have uh, an app coming out very soon for the academic. We already have one, but we're coming out with a brand new app that will fully integrate your account in app format as well. That's it for me for today, students. Thanks for all of your comments and participation. Uh, effort, practice, it's the key to success. So all of you who were commenting and answering in the chat, whether I was reading or not your responses, good for you. I tip my hat to you. Keep up the practice. Keep pushing forward. Don't let life and people discourage you. You all have incredible minds, okay? You all have incredible minds. Bye for now. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow, more IELTS classes starting at 1330 Central European time. Much love to all of you.